select board meeting. Uh, we have skipped right over spring and we have hit summer today. Um, as you all can tell by the heat outside, and I'm sure some are thanking and some are just saying we could have gone a little slower. But um, So we'll start the meeting tonight with our consent agenda. And we have uh, warrants. Uh, PR 1842, AP 1842 and AP 1842. Let's make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. All right. So done. We are now rolling into public comments. Good evening. Do you have any public comments this evening? Madam Chair, sure. um, these are the owners and operators of. Uh, I may have got this name wrong. Cool Gem. Cool Gem. Cool Gem. Cool Gem. Um, Korean Kitchen. They're opening in the mall uh, this Sunday. Well, uh, we're going to be doing some kind of uh, soft opening Sunday night, and then Monday is the grand opening. Which mall? At the Hampshire Mall. Hampshire Mall. Yes. Where's your, where are you located? Uh, right across the hall from the Pins Bowling Alley, and there's the indoor racing where from them as well. Thanks to Anus. Uh, the newsstand? Uh, yes, okay. we're about two storefronts down from them. Okay, great. Yep. All right. Thank you. So they came in today. Uh, their opening is a soft opening is on Sunday. Uh, they need a common picture on their license, and we didn't. So this is time sensitive. It's coming up as uh, item of business that the chair did not recently anticipate 48 hours in advance. Okay. That would be fine. Do you want to take so that now? We'll have that. Oh, I see it. We can do that now since you're here oh, and we have great. time. Would that be okay? Perfect. Okay. Would you like to tell us anything about your um, establishment? Or before uh, we sure. Um, well, we've uh, we're approached or we had spoken with Pyramid, um, the uh, management company for the, the mall, a few months ago, and they advised us that there was an opening here at the Hampshire Mall, and we came up and we liked the area. We're from Wilbraham, mm -hmm. so we're uh, not too far away. And so we came up here, loved the area up here. It's nice, you know, nice and country like. And, and uh, we got an opportunity to look at the mall. We weren't really interested in a big, big mall, big food court. Mm -hmm. So this really kind of suited what we were, we were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have very many food venues, and so they were eager to, to fill that spot with another restaurant. Mm -hmm. And so it seemed like a, like a really good match. Is it a sit down or you're just using the food court? It's a, we're just using the food court. It's mm -hmm. a quick serve restaurant format, whereas we have the counter and there's no, there's no tables. Mm -hmm. And we're using the, the common dining area. So you don't need any, you just need, you don't, you're not serving alcohol or no, anything like that, no. you're just doing uh, sodas and things like that. Yeah, we have, um, we have bottled cans and sodas, bottled water, and um, our menu is, we would like to think it's a bit expanded. I would prefer to maybe a little smaller, but there's so many Korean dishes that they wanted to put on. Uh, we felt that it was, you know, we, we can do it, so. Okay. Yeah, bulgogi. Yes. All right. <laughs> we have a, and we, we've got a few fusion type dishes as well. The a, the bulgogi, the bulgogi hoagie, which is kind of like a cheesesteak, but with some kimchi, <laughs> then we like slice steak. Oh, it's it's it's, it's really good. So, so Sunday night you're having a soft opening. Yeah. Well, not it, what we wanted to do is we, uh, we need an opportunity to test our equipment prior to our opening on Monday. Mm -hmm. So the mall closes at 6. The church um, that we belong to, the Korean church town in, in Springfield, we've invited um, our friends from there. They're going to come up. We're going to cook, make sure all the equipment works, and they're going to, it's like kind of like a little celebratory mm -hmm. event. And then Monday, uh, we'll be doing a, a I guess the grand opening, and we'll be giving free um, samples of some select items throughout the entire day. 
So it'll be a good opportunity for people who haven't been exposed to Korean food. Um, you know, to I haven't. Get, I'm already ready. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> to get a free, you know, a free opportunity, or an opportunity to taste something for free. Um, and if you're familiar with Asian foods, there's there's a lot of similarities between like Chinese dishes and the Japanese dishes. Like one of the items we'll be giving away free on Monday is um, the kimbap, the kimbap, which is like a sushi, like a sushi roll. So if you're familiar with that, you'll definitely enjoy that dish. And then we've got um, some Chinese influenced dishes. Um, I think everybody in America sort of general salad chicken. Mm -hmm. We'll be carrying that. That seems to be a very popular dish. <laughs> Especially with the college uh, yes. students you'll be getting. Yeah. Yes. Kimbap and Korean dumplings. Oh, and the dumplings. Uh, that's another 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 big item. We'll be giving those away for free on Monday too. So uh, that'll be a nice opportunity for the public to be exposed to you know Korean dishes that they may not otherwise have been in the past. What did they have to do? Um, you couldn't hook into any gas there, right? Or could, Oh yeah. The, how did that work? That, for you? That's been somewhat of a delay, but uh, we've overcome that. The uh, Dennis and Tim are going to be coming out tomorrow, tentatively, and hopefully um, that'll go through, because if you're familiar with Johnny, he had a uh, death in the family, so that's, mm -hmm. and he's been coordinating that entire operation, mm -hmm. but uh, he's been, he sent me a message today, and I'm like, Johnny, just, you know. Are you all set with the fire chief also? Yes, the fire chief's on board, so we're going to, there's going to be a a big party over there with the propane turn on, and, <laughs> <laughs> and once the gas is on, we're we're halfway there. You're all set. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. And we're we excited. Have, as long as we have all of our permits in place, I yeah. don't see a problem. So, does anybody else have any um, questions or entertain a motion? David, do you? I'm sorry. No, no. It's a perfectly fine. Uh, it just needs to come and get the license, which is issued by the select board. That's the only thing. You can take your vote tonight. We'll have it prepared for us for signature at your next meeting, which is tomorrow. I'll make a yes. motion to approve the common bid. I'll second. Thank you. Further discussion? We look, we look forward to seeing you at the All first right. meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, that's great. Well, okay. Welcome to Hadley. Great, thank we're you. Glad to have you. Yeah, we're, we're, glad. we're excited to be here. Good. <laughs> we're glad to have you also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're all set. Thanks. Thank you so much. You'll see David or Jennifer on. Friday? Well, Friday. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I spoke with Jennifer at length today. She kind of told me the whole the whole program, so I'll, I'll be speaking to her probably tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. issued by the EPA. Uh, we have heard nothing from the federal government or the state government as to whether they're going to extend the stay or if they're going to go full in implementation come July 1st. We are well positioned to file the notice of intent, which is the first regulatory hurdle that we need to clear. That's, that's due in September, mid-September. That's basically, yeah, basically, that's done. So we've been using this time to just catch up on all the things that we should be doing anyway. So we're in good shape there. Um, the Route 9 pedestrian crossing improvements, it's nearing completion. Uh, I believe they have about another couple of days left on construction, and then they're going to get the equipment up as soon as it arrives. May I ask a question? Sure. So I've had a couple of questions from uh, the public, and they wanted to know what was going on and where the sidewalk was being moved to, or the crossing was being. The, the new crosswalk basically lands somewhere between the two old crosswalks. Right. Cumberland's across to the courthouse, I believe. So the question I was struggling to answer was, okay, so if that's where they're moving it to, how is that safer than the two that are there? They're, they're claiming, well, the, the one that was closest to the sharp curve, I think, was the biggest issue. Clearly that and one, And yeah. they, they're saying moving it to where they did was the only place they could position it with other utilities in the ground, but get far enough away from the sharp corner. 
in order for traffic to see the proper lighting coming around the corner and have enough time to stop. I think a lot of people are, are still worried about people, unfortunately, tend to pick up speed on the bends now. Yeah. So are they going to have signage in advance of that? Or? Uh, I think signage was mentioned. Um, crosswalk, uh, something or other ahead in, in the initial uh, meeting back last July, I think it was, when this was first being talked about. I'm wondering if we should um, ask the police department, you know, the sign books that we have. That maybe when I think they ought to sit there for a few nights because there's certainly the 40 miles an hour goes down when you hit the center of town. Oh, yeah. And I think, you know, nabbing some people as they come around the corner is a, is a great thing. I'll be able to just shout that out there. He's the man. He's, He's the our man. man. That's definitely the officer you want. Not okay. holding a radar gun, I would say speed's definitely an issue on that corner. It is an issue yeah. on the corner. But also, you there. know, maybe even new crosswalk or something on that signboard because, I mean, I, I can. I personally oh, every day and don't so like you. people using the center of Route 9. They should be at the crosswalk here where you push a button. Yeah. It certainly is much more safer. I hate to encourage people. If you even have to walk that little bit of difference, it certainly makes a difference on your life. You know, trying to cross there and be safe because it's not. But we understand it's not. This isn't a town. This right. is a... Yeah. But but yeah. to address that, this, this Hawk system, I don't think there's many, if any, in New England or near New England, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. a lot of them down south. Yeah, mid but it's, it's poles with light bars. I mean, it's this thing's supposed to stand out like a Christmas tree, and you're supposed to understand it. So, again, you come around the corner, and you see this big U-shape with the lights and telling you what to do or not to do. You hold that it, thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am repeating the verbiage that I heard last July. Well, because we have to look it on one side, and we have that, you know, that, yeah. the Amherst on the other, so. It might be worthwhile to uh, send around to the select board the presentation that Mass DOT did on the Hawk yeah. crossword walk, the uh, high intensity signs and the uh, illumination. So, um, you, could, you could put that on YouTube and let people watch it. We don't need any. Apparently, it is on YouTube already. Is it? Well, good. Tell them, let's tell them to watch it on YouTube to what the crosswalk is all about, right? I just wanted to bring it up to see if we could engage our public safety department in that regard once it's. The go life. I'm going to refrain from comment myself, but go ahead. What else do you have? Moving right along on the, the long list of things that we're doing these days, uh, the emergency repair to the sewer line South Maple Street on Route 9 uh, is going along. Uh, Marlow, you probably have a much more in depth uh, presentation to do, but uh, we did um, secure the emergency procurement uh, relief from DCAM. I got an emergency waiver from them. We contacted the Department of Revenue for emergency expenditure authorization. Um, Marlow has put together a funding plan for funding this entirely through his uh, sewer operational budget with assistance from the $10,000 reserve in the sewer enterprise fund. So um, we'll be asking you to make a transfer of 10,000 from sewer reserve to the sewer operations in order to support this project. Um, the amount of the base bid uh, is 72,326. Uh, you're already doing the work at this point with proceeding with an emergency. Final budget is around 85,000 total yeah. you know, with, with the least detail, uh, uh, septic vehicles and whatnot. So, so we should man manage to finish most of this uh, and be out of the University of Massachusetts graduation date of May 11th. Uh, and I think 12. you may have some updates. In for 11th and 12th. 11th and 12th, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, if you may, I can get that out of the way now. It's further on the agenda, but What's that? Uh, we completed 800 feet last night. We're doing 1,000 feet tonight. Mm -hmm. We will be out of that area and potentially next week or the following week we'll be coming back into the E Street intersection. So once we get through tonight, the last 1,000 feet of 12 inch, mm -hmm. we can all breathe easier and we'll be fine for graduation. Uh, the company the moved some things around, understood our problems when they saw the film, so they moved some less emergency work from other communities around and they were able to come in and do ours and they were a little quote. Great. Quote so, uh, nice. That's where we're at. Thank you. It's good, good hard work. <laughs> 
So it goes to the sewer department, Dave. Uh, they're working some long hours in assisting the project. It's not just the company. They love it. They love it. Yeah. Yeah. Or is your, your whole sewer team working on it? Yes. Good. Uh, I think they're going to swap out tonight. I got one additional from Highway. Okay. Uh, rotating out. We're going to have to put a third septic truck on tonight. We've got a lot more flow on the section we're doing tonight mm -hmm. to, to bypass the sewer. It's a bigger, bigger. Yeah, we're taking the mall side tonight in the, in the hotels, even though we put letters out to everybody, you know, everyone to please limit the water the best you can. But we're taking on probably three times as much flow. Um, and both trucks kept up without even a, skipping a beat last night, but I got three trucks on tonight. And it's so. probably better now in the middle of the week than towards the end of the week when they have more Absolutely. people in the hotels, yeah. too. And my fear of doing it next week was uh, we must have people filling the hotels throughout the week before the weekend of graduation. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that our the flows were the big thing. It wasn't so much the traffic, it was the flows we were going to see in the sewer system to get this done. So okay. sounds like it would be pretty good until we get to the E Street. But. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the money came out of your sewer operating budget. So, David, when do we need to do something to replace that money because that was supposed to be used for other things, I assume, until the end of the year? Well, year. I, think, I think once the project is done and we look at the rest of the work that needs to happen, we have emergency authorizations from the Department of Revenue to deficit spend, but we would have to fix that at the small, small town meeting. We want to avoid that if we can. Uh, avoid the deficit spend. Uh, avoid the deficit right. spend, but uh, once we have all the pieces together, we'll come back and say, okay, we think we can make it to the end of the fiscal year or not. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we can just slide by. Um, depends if something else comes up. Putting off a few of the more expensive maintenance items that we normally do this time of year. Um, and again, kick it forward to fall town meeting using the capital impact fee funds to put back up the reserves would be my recommendation. Because if we don't, it'll throw the whole model we're going to talk about and, and the rate thing up. Uh, but we can talk about that further later. Let's, Let's get through tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So the Commonwealth Compact IT grant, that part of the upgrade of the sewer pump stations with a supervisory control and data acquisition type system, which we're now going to call the mission system. I guess that's a brand name. It's a form of scale. Yes. Okay. Uh, that now is substantially complete. And we had a sunset provision on that grant money on June 30th. So we successfully managed that, applied for, managed that grant, and uh, brought the project up and running. So now, all pump stations are uh, are connected to your cell phone. And there, all our pump stations and uh, wastewater treatment plant are now cellular. cellular. Um, we can now cancel the existing phone lines to eight stations, uh, eight uh, eight of the stations. Should be about 450 dollars for the city. Everything goes to iPads and phones now, so. Mm -hmm. nice. The town hall fire alarm system and the DPW fire alarm system, we just have some late uh, information on that. We've, we've identified low bidders that are below the uh, procurement threshold for public works and public construction. So uh, we're now in a position where we have a budget, we have vendors, and we'll start developing the contracts. Uh, getting that work uh, done so that we can get fire safety alarms in these uh, critical buildings. I've uh, been bugging the people that are doing our levee subsurface survey. They gave me a verbal report over the telephone some weeks ago. They should have uh, given us the written report and they owe you a presentation. So uh, I'm going to get aggressive with them. David, just to go back, that direct local technical assistance grant, looks yeah. like there was a change there. What is that uh, about? All right, so um, the DLTA grant, this is something that we partnered with the uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for regional procurement of accounting services. Uh, we have an accounting services provided by a state municipal accounting. We have a one-off relationship with them, a one-to-one -one relationship with them. Uh, we can renew with them, or we can look at what the benefits of a regional approach may, may involve. So we'll be evaluating those bids tomorrow morning. We sent out uh, eight invitations for proposals. We only received one back. 
uh, and I haven't had a chance to take a look at it. I just received it this afternoon. Um, and that's accounting, like a town accountant? or town accounting. Okay, and is it an auditing type of service or town accounting services, basically? An accounting services. Okay, okay. We went out to bid for an audit uh, 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 firm, and uh, Melanson and Heath was a successful bidder, and we have them for the next three years. Uh, just as a side note, uh, there are certain exemptions from procurement and accounting and auditing services are exempt, but we go out and bid anyways. Best management practice. Okay. Yeah. Town meeting, we have a town meeting coming up and we'll be talking about that in the moment. Ambulance RFP, so we're uh, getting the contracts ready for you to take a look at it. Target date of May 16th, your next meeting. Um, I just have a question on that too. Yeah. Uh, I was just worried about the wording you had here that we awarded the three-year ambulance contract to action. Technically, I, technically what you did is you were interested in looking at the ambulance service through action and pay condition upon a successful contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We agreed to go into contract negotiations with them. Yeah. Is now a good time to talk about any of that ambulance issue? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you well, know, you want to burn up some time until later. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Let's move on here. We've got other things to do. We don't need to rehash the ambulance All right. at this point. So the department heads uh, met today, and we, uh, we uh, uh, started talking about the closeout for fiscal year 2018. I'll be asking the board to take action. Uh, there are certain deadlines that I want everybody to be adhering to with respect to reimbursable grants, Chapter 90 reimbursables, uh, deadline for invoices, encumbrances, payroll, all those things that need to be uh, uh, thought about at the department level. We also talked about line-to-line -line transfers where uh, you're allowed to transfer money from one line to the next, if you have deficit in one line and a surplus in another, you can do that, but it involves select board and finance committee approval for that action. And that can only occur in the last two months of a fiscal year. And also reserve fund transfers. And I'm asking the, the departments to have all of those line to line transfers, Gabriel, all the line to line transfers and all the reserve fund transfers be prepared by no later than June 20th, which is the last select board meeting, probably the last finance committee meeting of the fiscal year. So. Gotcha. Uh, I also, uh, we did a free cash certification schedule. I updated it to match the 2018 calendar. I have that on your agenda for next time you meet, just to take a look at it and make sure that this works for everybody. And I'll be asking the board to sign off on that so that we have buy-in from all the departments. We want to get away from the problem that we had last year of free cash being certified very, very late. And basically, we're going into town meeting a little blind because we didn't know what the number was until too late, so not too late, but just in the nick of time. We want to avoid that. We want to know what that uh, number is by mid-September. So certain things have to happen at that. Well, as long as the state comes up with it, then we, then we get to know. But you know, it's, our hands are tied until then. But we need to hit deadlines in order to give them sufficient time. And that's what didn't that. happen. Yeah. Right. And the financial management team will be meeting shortly to evaluate the accounting proposals under the DLTA regional grant. And we'll also be working on some of the projects that the Department of Revenue recommended back in 2017 for our best management program. Uh, and one of the simplest things that we can work on is probably the most useful is to compile a unified financial policy manual for the town of Hadley. We have lots and lots of financial policies, but they're spread out all over the place, in different offices. And I sort of know where, what they all are, but it's not written down in one place, and so that's something that that team can work well on. Can I ask a quick question sure. just on that? I'm asking that, Jim. Right, speak up. Uh, and it, 
dawned on me when I was looking at David's report. Um, I've been the select board representative on the financial management team. Is it that I continue to do so? Sure. Time with me. Okay. Okay. So could you just make sure I get? Yeah. Um, when the financial management team uh, meets, I will certainly let everybody know so that you know that it's happening. Um, Mother's Club Recycling Day, April 28th, annual time meeting coming it's up. April 28th, and it was a sounding success. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. May yeah look day. at that. How <laughs> uh, time flies with that. All right, so town meeting tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Hopkins Academy and Gymnasium. Uh, and then the Asparagus Festival coming up on June 2nd. One question. Certainly. On the uh, levy and uh, common repairs from the postal incident and the other incident, mm -hmm. where, where are we with that? Because this is the time to be planting grass and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you've been working with the post office. How's that working? Uh, well, there was an issue apparently when, when they cut the check and sent it. We, we, we have a contractor do what we call the price. They cut a check somehow. They have to they have to recut us a check. Um, and we get the work done. So I can make a phone call tomorrow. Uh, the levy, I think, Dave is still yeah, uh, dealing with. Been working with the insurance company and the uh, of the perpetrator. Uh, who, <laughs> who, who didn't uh, you know, report it to his insurance company, so they had to learn about it from me. So <laughs> we'll, we'll get everything worked out. Okay. The postal perk. <laughs> Sweet. I don't see anybody here from the senior center or the bill, library bill of committee. So oh, sure. I can mention something in the senior center. That'd be good. Uh, did we? Did you contact the planning board chair about those meetings, May fifteenth and June? Oh yes, in terms of moving them moving to the venue. Kins, yeah. Yes, um, I did, and I got a, the answer back that the fifteenth they didn't want to move the venue because it's just a submittal. But the, for the June thirteenth, as in June twelfth. 12th, 12th. June, June 12th. Yes, they want they want our assistance in scheduling a large room for them. Okay. So we're working with the schools on that one. Okay. Um, can I ask a question? This is Christians on the, the committee. One of the well, I think this is maybe more messaging. Um, one of the things that we talked about at the joint building committee meeting that, that David and I sit on between the library and the and the senior community center is making sure that we have very clear talking points for town meeting because I'm sure a question that will come up repeatedly is um, can't you just move it? Yeah. And I've talked about that a couple of times and I've really yet to see just bullet points on that. Yeah. And I think it would be really I think Suzanne has okay. some of that, that information. Well. I know that uh, she did give me that to move it west would cost at least five hundred forty thousand dollars. I, I, I know got that, the price tag, but, but I don't know. Yeah. So, could would you mind maybe getting that message back to? I mean, this isn't new. This is something that yeah. we've asked for a lot. And that seems to be the biggest question. Yeah, details are good to answer those questions. So. Right. Because, you know, again, ultimately, as I've been reminded repeatedly, um, it's all true. It's it's the select board's building project. So right. I'm really feel, feeling a little uncomfortable with, you know, I, I know enough, but I, I think the folks that have been on the building committee meeting directly with the OPM, I, I and that's kind of, that. I think that's kind of hard to pinpoint. Yes, the select board is in charge of the buildings, right. but we certainly. You're not there for the nitty gritty details of those. No, the but we, we, we weren't, we weren't there in the beginning. We were kind of, I thought in the beginning, blindsided because we didn't know that these projects were taking place and being underway, even with the library and then the senior center jumping on it, they kind of just 
snowballed and rolled into their own committees at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and then they came to us. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, all of a sudden, it's ours. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think we were a little bit blindsided by that to actually say that it's our uh, building project at this point because well, now, our, our I mean, purview. it is. And I think, I mean, it is. It's a purview. building. Right. It's going to be a town building. I understand that. Sure. But. Yeah, like I said, I just, you know, I just want to make sure we, we as a select board have as much clarity. And then we didn't us. even know at the same point that they were going to go for a bigger building. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fast forwarding past yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah, from, from where we are now. Till yeah, now. Yeah, after the you know, two, certainly. After we the have representation votes. on the committee. Absolutely. You know, and mm -hmm. we continue to have representation. So, <laughs> yeah. so sorry, I know you're jumping yeah, in. Yeah, throw me into the fire here. Yeah. <laughs> Not the pants. Just a, <laughs> just a small homework assignment, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about the library? So before we abandon the senior center, there is an issue that comes that's coming up from the OPM. And the OPM is asking me, and I think it's an, uh, entirely appropriate that I share this with the board, um, about how to uh, review the 10 proposals that were submitted. And in your board docs tonight, you'll see that there are there's a list of submissions, 10 of them. Mm -hmm. um, under the terms of the RFQ that went out, uh, and let me just back up a little bit to say that the purpose of this RFQ is to develop a stable of pre-qualified contractors who will then receive a, uh, a bid package uh, and other people would be ineligible to apply because they've not gone through the pre-qualification process. Uh, in our RFQ, one of, the, one of the requirements was to have two years of audited financial statements for their company. Only four of the companies, or yeah, only four of the companies meet that criteria. And the owner's project manager is concerned that our stable of pre-qualified general contractors is too small and that we want to widen this up as much as possible. And so he's asked me, would we res review, would we accept what is called rev reviewed financial statements? And Molly, and when you were chair, you and I talked about this and we both agreed that that was inappropriate. There are too many horror stories of other towns out there embarking on a major building project only to find their general contractor has gone bankrupt. And there's one town out there that has to do weekly invoices because the cash flow is so poor. That's the only way to keep the project moving forward. So there are horror stories out there. We don't want to have a relaxed standard on the, on the, um, <coughs> on the financial strength of the, of the company that we're going to engage for the, the project itself. So, a number of conversations back and forth. I stood my ground on the audited versus reviewed statements. It's resulted in these four being qualified under those. Uh, the, the ones in red, I'm the, one the ones in red. Mm -hmm. So, wouldn't enough bonding take care of that problem? with them not, not being able to finish the project or not being able to carry out their contractual needs. Um, I'm just looking at the list here and there's some, yeah, some, names, surprised. some yeah. names that are pretty mm -hmm. significant Prominent. in this area. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I was too. Yeah. So uh, can we look at it from a bonding angle to see if there's a way we can kind of compensate for that financial risk? Well, I, I, I looked at it a couple of different ways. First of all, for anybody involved uh, in a building project of this magnitude, they'd have to be certified by the state through the Division of Capital Assets and Management and, and Maintenance. So they'd be DCAM certified. So that's a form of pre-qualification, but it turns out that their financial pre uh, review is not as rigorous as ours. We could, we could look at the bonding. Bond companies are notoriously difficult to work with when you have a claim. Right. Um, they'll, they'll ask for every document, public record. Do you have experience with that? Yes, we have. <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, I, I agree with David. If there was something that we could do. I just hate to exclude some of these companies here that have 
a great reputation as far as yeah. performance. Yeah. So there's so there's three op options that we that both Pam and I have sort of developed. There are more options than this, but they're crummy options. So the three relatively sane options are one extend our review time to give the companies that are not meeting the, the audit uh, requirement time to get their, their books audited. So that would be 30 or 60 days. We could extend the time by which we would be reviewing these. So that would give you an extra candidate or two. That's one option. That would, would be very difficult to do. Would they be this. even willing to do that? Yeah. I'm totally get an audit done in 60 days for yeah trying to get an auditor scheduled in right. in that time frame it's going to be extremely difficult for them to do yeah. so well, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> so massachusetts regulations regarding review of contractors allows us to use our judgment so we can we can relax our standards basically uh, the judgment and uh, the review uh, process so that's another option um, and then the other option is to cancel the pre-qualification requirement altogether. It just goes straight to bid and let anybody who would be DCAN certified. I mean, so when David and I had the conversation, you know, it was irrespective of, right. and this hadn't even, um, it was just a question when it was an issue. And, and I was telling David, I actually used to, my specialty was actually auditing real estate and construction years ago. Right. Um, and it's a tough business and the cash flow and the inventory and all of that stuff, I mean, it, it can be, um, you know, you're dealing with percentage complete on projects. I mean, you're constantly rolling one project into another. Right. You can get in trouble pretty quickly. Um, and we've all seen probably <coughs> just you know, smaller home contractors do it. So. There is an awful lot of financial risk in these companies, and um, but, but I certainly agree with you. I was, I was surprised when I pulled this up, and I'm like, wow. I mean, I would have thought for sure some of these highly reputable companies would have audited yeah, financial audited statements. Yeah. So what I'm wondering is, given the fact that they don't, maybe we could somehow put the burden on them to say, you know, if in fact for cost reasons or whatever that you haven't chosen to invest in, an audit. Um, somehow, we need to be comfortable that they're they're a going concern, because we've also had some local reputable contractors have gone out of business within the past ten years. Right. So. I guess from a personal experience, this I don't know if this works for the state. Could we change the? Pre-qualification to be that that not having audited financials would not be disqualifying, but could be a, a, a I guess so they bonus points on bonus points on their their bid. Yeah. Uh, so that way we can you know take that into account. If if, if there's two companies that were fairly similar, the one with obviously the audited financials, and maybe that would um, yeah. encourage them to possibly yeah. work on an audit before the the award is made. Yeah. So that's one of the options. So we could do it that way. And I mean, I obviously encourage them to have the audited financials. Fourth <laughs> option, which I didn't say, which is we just stay with the four, and that, that's that's your stable of pre-qualified contractors. Yeah, that's tough, I mean, Yeah, I, I see. Connecticut, Adams. Maybe two, yeah. two out of the four that I've even heard of. <laughs> so but I've heard of none of them. Yeah. And we've done some building projects in town that have had people bid on projects, right. you know, between the school and the yeah. safety complex. And yeah, I mean, I think these the names aren't even familiar to me at all. The burden has to be on them to give us some level of comfort. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, quite frankly, I'm a little bit uncomfortable having us be I, evaluating I, that. But You know who I respect on this is uh, David Tudrin, mm -hmm. since he does uh, a lot of building construction and architect that he is, um, just to maybe get his input on this, just to see what he has to say. Do you want me to reach out to him or would you cross the hall? Is he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they're in a meeting. Yeah, they're in a meeting. Oh. Building committee? Yeah. Oh. Remember they were meeting tonight yeah. and they knew that if he wanted to come what what's our deadline for this? 
Well, it depends on tomorrow's vote. Okay. Um, I mean, this is this is their purview. <laughs> that senior we center, should be right? we should be bidding this out in the next uh, uh, forty-five days. Okay. May twentieth was the deadline for getting candidate eligibility to bid. Just okay. to this. Okay, so May twentieth, we would have had to narrow this list down to eligible. Yeah, contractors. Did it leave? I think they're still working on updating their schedule okay. exactly at the same time. Hey, side. David. Good afternoon. <laughs> Sorry to drag you out. No, of it's the fine. Meeting. She did it. Just so I, know. I, <laughs> I, I respect your your expertise in this area. No problem. Uh, we have sent out an RFQ for the senior center. Um, people ha and one of the recommendations was to have them have two years of audit. Uh, Financial statements. Uh, financial statements. Statements. Okay, it's reasonable. Um, so, the people that have submitted, there was ten submitted. Only four out of the ten uh, have had two years of audit. Yeah. Do you have had any? Um, I mean, personally, I work for a much larger corporation. We're audited yearly and have been for the last twenty years. Mm -hmm. I know. So, yeah, for smaller firms. Maybe it's more of a um, an impact to, to them, but it's very common in the in the to do construction, that, to have construction to companies to yeah to do that. Would you mind lo looking at that list there, in, uh, James? And just oh, give you, right. give you an idea of uh, which who was not audited and who was. Is there any indication of which ones were and which ones were not? Uh, they're they're in red. The ones in red are the ones that have on Do you have it? No, mine don't come up with that. Here, David. Sorry. Do those do have an audit or do not? The ones in red. Red have. Yeah. Those four, you can see a couple of them are out of color. I've never seen them. So there's some deep, other decent. So, sorry again, the ones in red do not. Yeah. Do have it. They do have it. So, so you can see there are a couple of more local. surprised some of the, some of the other ones. That's what we were just not. saying. Yeah. Uh, number one and number and six. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very surprised that either of those. And there's a big difference between an audit and reviewed statements. So that's why. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, those are reputable companies, in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. the ones that do and the ones that do not. So, right. So the, the thing that we're, we're toying with, David, do you want to give him the scenarios and, and yeah, just so what your thoughts are on that? So there are four choices. One is we stand our ground. The four are the four. They're the pre-qualified GCs for that will receive the, the bids for the senior center. Uh, then we probably can have at least one of them say thanks but no thanks. Um, so we're down to three. Um, the other is to extend the time for a review to give the other companies an opportunity to get their audits done to qualify for the project. The other is to mass regulations allow us to actually use a little bit of judgment in the way that we look at the okay. submissions. So okay. we could say that um, that reviewed financial statements are not automatically a disqualification, but they may rank you lower. In in certain regards, yeah. and then the final, the final option is to um, cancel the pre-qualification and just go straight to bid. I'm um, curious how you came up with that right uh, requirement. Was, was that based on uh, historical RFQs that you've seen with uh, similar project types? Was, I mean, who put that in, and, and where was that from? The, owner, the owner's project manager was the one who put that in. Okay. But I agreed with the, the requirement, okay. having heard of our stories in other towns. Is that yeah. unusual to ask for two years of audit? I'm not sure, Joyce. Because you, you honestly, do it yearly anyway. Uh, you know, we're, we're expected to be audited in my field, um, so that hasn't been a problem. But, but these are smaller firms, and I can see that it's harder for them to obtain that. But there's, there's some reputable firms there that do not have the audit, so I, I, I'd be a little cautious to... to Tighten the, the rope a little too much, and then, and then ultimately you're going to get some higher prices because you have less competition. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure what to tell you to do at this point. Um, do you feel that the audit is, and David mentioned something about bonds? Yeah. Is that sometimes it's cover that? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I would expect there to be a performance bond. 
performance. Yeah, so there'd have to be a payment and performance bond. And well, you have filed sub bids here as well, right? Yeah. So you're going to have uh, beyond these contractors, you're going to have a list of subcontractors that provide additional <coughs> services. So you sort of spread out the risk in that sense, right? Yeah. So I guess you know part of the concern is that big difference between the, re the review and the audit, you know, it's this idea of substantive testing versus, you know, asking questions. And with the construction companies, a huge issue is receivables um, because it's, again, this project work. So these payments are coming in and they're going out, they're sticking their neck out, they're making a commitment on the project. And if those receivables don't get collected, because I'm pretty darn sure, like, none of these guys are going to have you know, they'll be flush with cash on their balance sheet. I mean, they're constantly. Right. Well, there's a schedule right. of values that you assign to the project at the beginning of the project, and generally the mobilization number is something that's billable almost immediately to the, right. to the, to the beginning of a project, which is where some of that occurs, so it doesn't give the contractors much risk up front, and they can build a mobilization quickly. Right. But from, from our standpoint, to the extent that they some of the smaller firms may only have a couple of projects going on at a time, and right. if they have significant receivables, you know, we're, we're not going to, we can ask all the questions in the world. Yeah. It's different from an auditor going in. And I really, I hate, I, I would hate to disqualify them, but I, I think there needs to be some other level of diligence done on them, because <coughs> nor, nor can Fair we enough. afford to put the town at risk if, if Our, they're having problems we don't know about. Is it possible to make the requirements set such that they have an audit within the last two years or they have an audit within the last five years? Would that still give you the comfort level as opposed to two audits in two years? Well, it's like you said, it's pretty a dynamic industry. So yeah. an audit five years ago is, is good, but what happened in the last year? And sometimes <laughs> as a contractor, you work on a project that long, you actually right. might have only completed one project, one project in five, yeah. well, not five. So, I mean, that, that is something I might recommend is thinking about. I mean, did the OPM give you any kind of, uh, I mean, certainly they've got experience here. How, how do they uh, take this? Is this a, a deal breaker for them, or they think that you should loosen up the requirements? They're basically asking us to loosen up the requirements. And I, the, he's asked me to loosen them up to the point where I feel uncomfortable, but I think, yeah. but I think that's what we're talking about. The sense that I'm getting from the board is a, that using judgment in the requirements, which is allowed under Mass General Law, mm -hmm. is the way that we're going to go here. Yeah. So the only thing I, I would like to add then is just to, to make it clear that when these are evaluated, that there needs to be an added layer of financial scrutiny, what, whatever that winds up meaning. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, maybe we talk directly with the accounting firm that did the review. But, you mm -hmm. know, bank statements say, you know, <laughs> well, and the performance yeah. bond is really intended it, to just yeah. you know, mitigate your risk there as yeah. well. So that's very important mm -hmm. to make sure that's you know, mm -hmm. placed in and into the value that you think is appropriate for this. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I wish I could be more helpful. It's no, just no, it's, no, a, it's no. a little bit different yeah. of a market than I play in. So Yeah, mm -hmm. but you have a, a general idea of what, yeah. more so than what I have a general idea of, yeah. but that's why I respect your input. That's why I should slowly out of that meeting for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all just important for, business. Just for a minute. Absolutely. And you're involved with it anyway. I mean, this is part of a building that's going to be going up in Hadley. I mean, I hope. I hope. <laughs> 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 we'll see, won't we? <laughs> but I appreciate that. So, God so. knows what they've been doing in there without you while you're gone. They probably voted all sorts of things. They get, so. they get, <laughs> way, into, they get way off course. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I, I do well is I, I string them all back in. <laughs> But at least it, I think it gives us a, a good option of what we could we could ask for. Yeah. 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 So that's you. that's the message I'm bringing back to the OPM. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Yeah. You can share so that with them. What we're toying with over okay. here, so that's okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, is there any pleasure of the board on what we would like to you know, loosen the reins a little bit? So are you guys comfortable with that as far as um, audited financials not being a disqualifier, but uh, giving it a 
an additional positive weight to any bid that mm -hmm. does have audited financials. Yeah, so I think we, that can, idea. we can stress that to those contractors that if there's mm -hmm. a way to get those done quickly, or mm -hmm. maybe they're already in process, then. Or when was the, or the other question is when was the last time you did have an audit? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just like he said. Yeah, were they yeah. audited? Right. No. Yeah. When were you last audited? If I were, yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. What is the wording that we requested from them? Mm -hmm. And maybe there's something in that wording they didn't meet, but maybe they have something else that's. Maybe that's there. what we should have asked to submit their last audit, and then we could tell by their date on their uh, audit and how soon that was or how far back it was. Yeah. Which would play a factor into how reputable they might be, too. Yeah, I mean, typically if you see somebody go from an audit to a review, mm -hmm. um, it's because their bank's no longer requiring it. Right. So, and then if they're not having any issue getting getting gigs, then they're like, I'm not going to pay the cost of an audit. Yeah. The other reason to go from an audit to a review because there's an issue can be different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So I think that. Do we need to make a motion, I, or do we? Want a motion to open on that? Um, I, I, I think we I just have direction. Have the board wants. So if you'd like to take a motion, that's that's fine. It's up to you. If you'd like to do one or just direct him. Yeah, to I think that's. Yeah. So we'll see. All right. Okay. We'll carry forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. How about um, HCG Board of Councilors? Yeah, yes. I wanted to speak to that really quick. Sure. Um, so I wanted to mention, I know that it's on the agenda for the 16th to actually reappoint a counselor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that I won't be seeking reappointment for this year, um, mostly because I'll be leaving in the fall, so it'll only be for a short couple months anyway. So where are you going? Uh, Northwestern Kellogg. Nice. Business school. That's great. 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 Chicago? Yeah. I was just there. <laughs> Not at Kellogg, but I was in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, we just visited. Fantastic place. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity for perhaps one of the new select board members or somebody else who was looking to get involved for me to get them up to speed before the 16th if you're interested, so you know what you're getting into before the select board decides to appoint somebody. Um, in the meantime, any meetings that are still going on at the HCG, I'll be attending to keep informed, not in any voting capacity, but just you know, to represent Hadley's interests. And uh, yeah, lots been going on, so any questions for me now or after we get through town meeting might be more appropriate. Probably after town meeting, we've got, uh, I think, some voting to do on, well, on yeah. that, too, so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a, obviously been a fair amount of a, a recent round of, of press, so yeah, and I think we'd like to hear the inside, a little bit more of the inside story on. Yeah, and I'm happy to speak to that whenever, just if you want to do it after town meeting. And yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. After town meeting, you guys good, good with that? Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so we won't so be appointing anybody tonight to that position. No, but you right? should announce that the position is open and you'll be taking letters of interest from mm -hmm. Hadley residents. So move. So there is a position open for counselor to the HCG Board of Counselors for a one-year appointment uh, until the next annual town election uh, due to the write-in winner declined the position. Um, so we are asking if there are any interested um, community members that would like to uh, fill that vacancy for the time being for a year and represent us at the, at the COG. Um, we did vote to withdraw from the COG uh, this year, which uh, probably will just be until next year anyway. That yeah. we 2019 is the end of 2019, yep. so uh, this would be a short stint for somebody to do if they would like to. Okay, uh, not yet for public hearing. We already heard about the sewer line emergency procurement. We didn't have anything else on that, right? You're all set with that for telling us what you did? Yes, we're all set for now. Okay. I'll keep you updated on the, the finishing of the 14 inch. I want to get a solid date on it okay. after tonight. Anybody want to do a song and a dance here? Let's see. FY90 budget closeout. David already did that, didn't he? No, actually, I need you to take yeah. a vote. So here are the deadlines that I gave to the departments and the procedures for, for uh, revenues for last warrant for the encumbrances, line to line transfers and reserve fund transfers. The select board, I'm asking for them to declare the last warrant of FY18 to be July 20th. You could take a motion, that would be great. 
Um, I'll make a motion that we um, accept the recommended uh, dates as presented for the final final warrant and submittal of invoices. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. And would you like further discussion? No? We all set? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank right. you. Thank you. Few minutes. Um, yeah, let's do anything, any update on the annual town meeting warrant. I think we've just about hashed this to death until tomorrow. So, anybody else want something? Do we have everything we need from the town council as far as a response to our questions and still waiting? Well, you're going to be meeting with him tomorrow at 5 30. Um, and I was hoping to get a bunch of information by email, and I haven't received anything. 11th yeah. hour. 11th hour. <laughs> Everybody so, bring in a supposedly we're, we're yeah. meeting for at 5:30. I will be here as soon as possible, uh, quarter or six at the latest. But I should be here before then. So, right. which I think gives us plenty of time. We usually do meet ahead of town meeting to see if there's anything else going on. I think basically we're looking for some answers from uh, the attorney. So uh, I don't see us rehashing any other articles. Um, well, okay. Actually, before town meeting. If there's anything that anybody needs, we, please well, let we, Well, we didn't have, we did, do you have any numbers for us tonight, maybe? Uh, yes, I don't have them here, but uh, okay. I will. When, I will when are you going to share with us? Is that tomorrow? Yeah, I'll, I'll plug in those numbers and share them around. Okay. So the Finance Committee did have so a chance to review? So free cash, yeah. stabilization, yeah. sewer reserves. Any, any got back All to you? That, that, okay. um, yeah. yeah, that. That one page that's blank. Yeah, yeah, the blank. I was looking so to we'll see. We'll get the numbers uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll prepare as a, a scorecard for you. So that is you that can... change with the sewer reserves because of the project that's going on right now? Yes. No, that's a different yeah. fiscal year. Different fiscal year. Okay. okay. So I'll have a like a scorecard for you, so you can go through the financial articles. You'll find out how much. Is the appropriation and then which pots of money is being applied to meet that appropriation so that you have a running running tally of how things are going, which is useful to expand into any special town meetings so you have like a complete fiscal year understanding of what town meeting actions were. Okay. And I don't mean to um, put put myself in a position to potentially be eating crow after the next town meeting but just in the past one of the worst things that can happen at a town meeting is finding out that the numbers aren't quite right because you you can't you have to fix them like right there so there have been thank thankfully a very small number of meetings in the course of history but where something went astray and all of a sudden everybody's up there with you know Brian West takes his pencil off his ear and he's making mm -hmm. changes and finance committee so that's why this is important. I'm trying not to, because once it's voted, it's that. That's it. It's we used to have a finance committee member years ago would, would be up on the stage with his those one of those uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> machines up there going at it, seeing making all the numbers go. Yeah. It was Bernie. Um, he was married to a Kuczynski. Oh, come to me. I'll blurt it out one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a couple of announcements related to town meeting. You want me to do those now? That would be great. Yeah. Sure, we'd like to do announcements. I'm sensing this until we come yep. to our vote. Okay. Okay, so the two things um, I have been asked to announce. Uh, first thing is Hadley Park and Rec, thank you very much, is sponsoring Kids Drop-In Night. Um, this is for children ages 5 through 12. Um, and this is being held in the Hopkins Academy Cafe specifically to allow parents who want to attend town meeting the opportunity to do so. So the kids drop-in night is being held from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Again, that's Thursday tomorrow, May 3rd, uh, at Hopkins Academy Cafe. And donations will be accepted at the door. So they'll be providing snacks, games, Mother's Day projects, arts and crafts, um, so that you can go to town meeting and let your voice be heard. So again, big uh, shout out and thank you to the Hadley Park and Rec. And the other announcement um, I was asked to make is that Hadley Media is planning on conducting a survey. Um, what they're hoping to do is have um, a table at town meeting 
and they're they're in the process of clearing this with the town moderator so it may be physically in the town meeting space if he says no then it will be outside the hallway probably but they want to do a survey um, in the spirit of continuous improvement to find out what's working for folks what's not working um, how often people are watching Hadley Media, make sure they're aware that they can go to hadleymedia.org to see live streams as well as tapes of um, many, if not most of our, our public meetings. So if you have a chance, please stop by the Hadley Media table tomorrow night when you're at town meeting. Yeah. Anything else? I got one. Yeah. Sure. All right, um, May 24th, the Friends of Hadley Preschool silent auction. Is at the elementary school at 6.30 p.m. And uh, we've got a ton of stuff from local businesses, hotel stays from local hotels, and all kinds of stuff from um, Esalon and uh, Dunkin' Donuts, you, you name it. And that's to uh, raise money for their operating expenses for preschool, since that's not part of the school budget all the time, so. Nice, nice. Six, six o'clock? 6.30. 6.30, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Elementary school. Christian, do you have any? I have nothing. Have Molly any? stole my thunder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it said Molly, please. We got a call today. Well, we're coming down to the wire. Are, are we 8 o'clock yet, John? Close enough. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, 8 o'clock it is. We will have. Oh, uh, sorry, just one more thing. Oh, okay. Regarding town meeting, sorry. Yes. There was a question at the forum about the last vote for the clerk and treasurer. Yep. Did we get those numbers? Yes. You did. Okay. Um, I have it. Just check. An email from Jessica. Okay. Right. Right. There were two, two tries at that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Dating back many, many years. Yeah. I was actually <laughs> surprised how long ago the earliest one took place. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> okay. So notice is hereby given that the select board of the town of Hadley acting as the water commissioners and sewer commissioners will hold a public hearing on changing water and sewer rates and charges on Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018 at 8 p.m. in room 203 of Town Hall. And the public is invited to attend. And we are now opening the public hearing on the water and sewer rates. Marlo? Um, well, as we all know, that I, I met with the board twice to present uh, alternate A and then we went to an alternate B on the uh, water sewer rates uh, as it relates to our, our capital improvement plan as well as operational. Um, in the last meeting, we, we landed at a 5% a increase in water and a 15% increase in sewer, in which we scheduled a public hearing for tonight. Um, I went back through the numbers one more time, make sure we were okay. Um, so here we are. And because I'm not get, I haven't gotten into it. Do you actually have, just so we can reiterate to the public, how much that would cost people? I could do a quick analysis too. I did it on my water bill since we just oh. got them the other day. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, actually, yeah. Basically, you know, my water bill, my sewer bill goes up by $49 per year from what it is right now, about $12.14 per quarter. My water bill will go up by about um, 13, you know, $14 per year. So, you know, water, I don't think that's a big impact, but sewer is a big impact. Do you use a lot of water when your business or is that? My business, if we look at that, we're rated at a slightly different rate. It could go up by between five hundred and a thousand dollars per year, depending on how much we're using, and that's sewer, and so and water will go up around you know three hundred, one hundred fifty to three hundred per year for the business. So it's significantly you. more, you know. But but that's what it is. Just looking at the numbers. Okay. Did you have any other? numbers or is that basically about right? So it's 5% and 15%? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So 5% water. for water and 15% for sewer. I did do up a quick chart of uh, per 100 cubic feet what it would be like if it's $5.06 for um, say residential sewer, $5.06 per 100 cubic feet. Um, but I did, I did, did a quick chart on that in case we needed it. The average household bill? Um, 
residential, let's see that, residential sewer, uh, FY19 would be 582 per, per $5.82 per 100 cubic feet yeah. from 506. Is there any way to, uh, I guess, make the curve a little less steep as far as the increases in the sewer rates? So we've got 5% for water for FY19, which you know, I guess is reasonable. But as far as the 15% uh, for the next three years each year in sewer rates, is there any way to kind of spread that out over, over the years a little bit? Uh, well, we looked at that and where we were falling with our reserves uh, bring, being brought into to, to our level the, the operating budget. Um, FY19 was, was the, I think I spoke in, we spoke in the first meeting, the first presentation. Um, this, this year the 15%, next year 15% um, and moving capital further out and, and bringing some capital numbers down um, basically gives us our operational budget. So the answer is not no further down the road, but this year it's really important that with that number. It's really, really important. We're facing a situation, particularly in the sewer, where we're going to be insolvent, and then we would have to yeah. inject non-sewer money into the enterprise fund if we don't take some steps right now. So I think the vote that we're taking tonight is just for this year, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, this, this model. Year. Yeah. So we'll have another bite at it. Th this okay. model is for for me to keep and mm -hmm. to adjust my capital, adjust my numbers from year to year, and come back to the board. Now, bear in mind, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but we have 946 users in sewer as opposed to 2,000-something customers in water. Maybe it's more than that. I forget the exact number. So that's why you got the 5%, 15%, and that's why the curve is going down so quick with sewer, with the capital improvement and the projects we've done and the upcoming projects. So that's... Is this, is the sewer rates, the 15%, um, I mean, that would be across the board, I assume. Uh, yes, sir. You know, so is there any way to, I guess, divide that up? So, I mean, obviously you've got some, some, some heavier users out there. I just want to make sure that, you know, 15% could be a big deal to a residential customer or, or to an uh, agricultural customer versus maybe a car wash or whatever that that's, you know. Right, well, the, the agricultural, um, you have ag meters and, and everything's driven by from water use. Your sewer, your sewer rates are driven by your water. Okay. Um, so agricultural, as far as the farming community, they have separate meters. They're only charged for the water. Right. It doesn't charge the sewer. Okay. They have ag meters, so they can pay the sewer on that that large consumption of water. Yeah, I was just scared by the numbers to you know just projecting out. I know we're just voting this year, but you know it could double in the next five years. That those sewer fees. I mean, water would go up by one point you know, 140% or by 40% over the next five years. But I yeah, the sewer seems high, you know, it yeah. does seem high. Yeah. And I especially when you compare it to when I first, you know, I can talk many years ago. Um, but the thing back then was is that the plan was to have the whole town of Hadley on sewer, mm -hmm. which never came to fruition. Uh, but they did talk about that many years ago and it just never happened. And I don't think actually that our sewer plant at this point could even take uh, the whole town being uh, sewer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a fair amount of capacity though. Uh, we, we got pretty good capacity left, yes. Um, we're, we're pretty steady at about 68% the last three or four years. There's not, there hasn't been a big increase. But the amount of lines and things that you'd have to run well, you know, would certainly be a... Not to get in the nuts and bolts, but have these flat, it's flat land. You have nine pump stations. I mean, uh, cities, some cities only have one or two. Um, nine pump stations, 21 miles of Forest Main for a community of 5,946 payers is a ton of infrastructure. And as we know what the pipes are doing, they've aged. So mm -hmm. um, my opinion is only one other way to go, and that's that's through if we do capital through taxation. I mean, I'm not recommending it, but that's the other way um, to look at it uh, as, as it's the community sewer system. You know, it's the, could that be decreased through impact fees at all? I mean, are, could imp raising impact fees, could that offset some of the needed raises in the sewer? Um, impact fees are pretty much right up there. Um, I think the big thing is, is um, 
it'd be fair to say that uh, the, the large projects, the large commercial projects are, have slowed down. The impact fees haven't been as plentiful, I guess. Uh, you know, residential impact fee is, is, is a fairly reasonable rate, right. real reasonable. Uh, it's when you get into big commercial structures that, that your impact fees are a large fee. And we're not seeing that right now. Right. We don't have Berkshire Gas, you know, yeah. allowing anybody to hook in for, you know, new restaurants or things like that, which would certainly offset that. Did, did you ever have any conversation with uh, the DPW director in Amherst? Yes, last Friday. I met oh, you did? Okay. I met with Bill for last Friday. Did this, does this conversation come up at all about sewer? Yes, and yes. Possible? Um, you know, we've been so busy with everything that, you know, I was going to speak about it a little bit tonight. I had spoken to David a little bit, but um, yes, the town of Amherst was in, they were right in the middle of uh, redoing their permit for their plant. And, um, Which is in Hadley. Mm -hmm. And the, the DPW director reached out to me, mm -hmm. said there was an old plan at one point or another to, you know, send our sewer to, to Amherst. Would you like to talk about it? Because I would have to include it in my plans to it, to re-permit re and re-expand my plan or re rebuild the plan, whatever he's doing. It. So it, that was about the extent of the discussion. And I said mm -hmm. I would bring it back to the town administrator and the board. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we did have a discussion about that. It was interesting um, to know how they got to build their sewer plant in Hadley. I know. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a there's kind of a myth out there that you got to run a six mile pipeline all the way from our treatment plant to their treatment plant in order for that to happen. But again, not to get into the crazy engineering of everything, but it's much simpler than that than, than what was first thought. Yeah. Um, it was a beginning conversation. We talked about many things. We talked about Mount Warner Wells. Um, and, and I was only aware of it obviously because at one point Gilford was on and. We had a fascinating discussion about this one morning over coffee, and I'm like, all right, you know, yeah. I didn't really understand. Um, like, okay. He's had a crazy schedule. I've had a crazy yeah. schedule. It like took three weeks. To, all right, we're doing this Friday morning at mm -hmm. nine o'clock, and that's it. But, well, well, I think to, to David's point, and and this came up when Ty and Bond was in here. When you're dealing with expensive infrastructure, pretty much the only way to deal with it is either to determine that you no longer need it and you abandon it, or you expand the number of people paying for it. I mean, it's you have to scale the thing. And you know, I don't know enough about the stuff, but I, I to, to David's point about the cost increases, I mean, I think I, I can certainly get my head wrapped around 15% this coming year, but we also wrapped this into the conversation when some folks were talking about override, you know, that there's only so much that our taxpayers can absorb. And I, you know, would be more than happy, again, not to clear what your, your goals and objectives that you're going to bring to us for the coming year, but it seems to me that really digging in on the capital side of this whole sewer infrastructure in particular to see if there's any way to try to better manage or stave off some of these cost increases for our, for our users, um, I, I, it seems it behooves us to do that at this point. Is, so. is there any way to monetize our excess capacity that we have, whether that's, I don't know, getting sewage from adjoining towns, mm -hmm. letting some, you know, septage be treated by us from adjoining towns, maybe we can undercut someone on price a little bit and get some business that way so that we're actually using that capacity to make so revenue? So when, when I gave scenario B, I, I kind of moved the, the septage improvement out for her plant. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say it's a myth, but it's the only word I can come up with. It's a bit of a myth what we make on septage. Mm -hmm. If we take in 15 cents, a, you know, 15 cents a gallon, they bring a 2,000 gallon load. Right. Sometimes you have to cut that, that what you're getting revenues in half in order to stabilize the plant when they dump it in there. Chemicals, manpower, lab work. Septage upsets a small plant very easily. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dennis does a very good job of monitoring that, but there's a certain amount of manpower in chemicals. It, takes away from that revenue every time you dump a load in there. Um, that's why I backed off on, hey, let's open it up to uh, countywide and bring septage in, because we do have a small plan. It doesn't take much to upset it, and those numbers you don't have to go out to DEP and run reports. So um, yeah, it's an average of $80,000 a year, but really, at the end of the day, we're talking 50000 average that we're actually getting in revenue. I just look at the say 30 percent excess capacity that we have you know we'll just say yeah, it's so 20 just leverage. in case for you know sur um, surges but yeah you know good point molly um 
you know, we, we may want to look at that a little harder with, with Amherst for the simple fact that, Again, I, you, you know. no way to presume what sort of, no. I don't even know what I'm talking about it, but well, I'm just, if it's an idea, then I think we should But, you know, it. Uh, again, yeah. we just started the conversation. There, there, the other part of it is, you know, we got to work out, they have certain rate, rates over there, and their system's different than ours, that they're right. taking hours. How do we adjust our rate schedule for, for our, our taxpayers? Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot to be vetted out. Again, we just started talking about it now. Well, we certainly don't want to go to them and increece it even more over here on this no, side. Get into Amherst. Yeah, that exactly. doesn't really exactly. that doesn't yeah. cut it. No, yeah. because you know when we went into the rate study that we did in house last year, we compared to other communities, and um, you know again, Joyce and, and uh, Molly, you've heard this before, but when I did the comparisons to surrounding towns and even larger towns or cities. Their structure, their their rate structure is broke differently mm -hmm. because sometimes they, they, they do their capital projects out of taxation yeah. or their rate structure is just different. Yeah. So it's hard to get apples to apples when you say 506 per 100 cubic feet. Another community might be 306, but they do their capital differently from different areas of funding. So we did the best we could with that. And again, we did it again this time around and, and tried to find the best comparable. Um, and and I mean, certainly it was something that I would like to um, pursue or, or have further discussion with, with Amherst with, um, if it's okay with the board, um, at least to sure. get more information. And, yeah, well, um, for discussion soon. Um, yeah. My focus going forward is, is uh, I think our plant's in pretty good shape. I think our mm -hmm. pump stations are pretty in pretty good shape. Now, yeah. There, there's, <laughs> there's a few things in the pump stations we can peck away at with the operating budget that I have built in there that we should be doing a little bit each year. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think I think the, 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 the true focus, as we all know now, should be the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, well, the other thing I think we need, I'm sure the board's conscious of too is the fact that you know when you look at our sewer personnel two-thirds of the sewer department are, are fairly mature experienced individuals and they're not going to be there forever um, so at some point you know in time we're going to experience some turnover too and that needs yeah, to be part of our planning those licenses are probably as thin as they've ever been in, in New England right now too really? it's very hard to come by operators extremely hard mm -hmm. uh, okay so Motion, I'm going to make a motion to accept the recommendation of the DPW director um, and for the upcoming fiscal year, fiscal year, um, increase water rates by 5% and sewer by 15 um, with a firm commitment on the part of the board to um, dig in from a planning standpoint, um, particularly on the sewer side over the coming year. I guess a second for discussion. Okay. Um, I guess if we could split those, <laughs> because uh, for discussion's sake, I'd be supportive of the five percent raise in the water, but I, the fifteen percent raise in sewer is a big, pretty big jump for me. So that's I don't know. If that's so do you want to vote? I'll, I'll amend my motion to approve the water rate um, increase of five percent. Amend your second. Yeah. You want to vote on just the water rate for now? Can you do that? That's fine with me. All in favor of the water rate? Aye. 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 Okay. So rates? Okay, so I, I'll continue my um, offering of recommending the 15% increase on sewer rates for the coming year. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. And further discussion? I'm hemming and hawing here, seeing what David's going to vote for. <laughs> it's going to be on it, but uh, yeah, I know it seems it seems steep, um, and I know yeah, I'm personally going to be impacted by it. So it's it's hard to vote yes for a fifteen percent increase on something and right. feel unclear. And unfortunately, we held off on it over the past few years. That's which, the thing, right? Which. Um, and I'm sorry, he's not it. here. I have to channel him. John, John yeah. Scudders for years <laughs> yeah. said that we made a mistake by not increasing these rates. Yeah. Okay? So, yeah. Uh, sure. may, may I for just a second? And, and like I said, this 15% this is all about being able to have my operational budget with the three staff members in place for next year. I just. Um, this, this is purely just funding operations. Correct. It has nothing to do with capital um, planning. And, 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 you know, for, for the new board members, 
DEP is very strict on our our staffing plan and what we do and what we don't do. I, I wanted to get that out too. So we have to be very cautious of what we cut and how we cut. And what, and, you know that's that's why DEP and um, they what they wanted a sanitary survey and they also had to bring I and I and do a reevaluation on our staffing plan. So um, there's that piece of it too. It's not just what I want to fix or not fix or do, but there's also um, we're mandated by DEP on a lot of the stuff that we have to do. David, you had something. Yeah, just looking at the numbers, understanding the, the you know the cost increases that are likely to occur just because fuel goes up and chemicals go up, and uh, you know, you're kind of in a situation where you're rescuing the uh, the sewer. Uh, enterprise funds so this year it has to be a steep increase we can certainly commit ourselves to streamlining operations managing debt managing capital and looking at alternative funding sources and maybe even state funded uh, sewer rate relief programs uh, um, but the first year has got to be a big step and this is the second year I have trimmed my budget. I've looked over. I've gone through it. You know, if we could get a relief on the uh, the uh, hauling of the sludge, which is, I'm guessing, a couple of years out at this point. Um, uh, again, I've been through it with a fine tooth comb a couple of times. You know, there's there's probably maybe some small adjustments, depending on you know sometimes your chemicals come in lower and it's a good savings per year. But again, they're volatile. They might go up beyond the previous year, the following year. So. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a, a comment. I'm not, you know, saying that your budget is off the wall or anything else, or it needs to be shaved down more. Because you know, we've had a conversation that we've, we've done what you, you think you can at this point to save money. I'm just looking at it from the the voters' perspective of, you know, we've got to increase house values. We've got to be ninety-five dollars for the, you know, other projects in town and. And everything else just stacked, and now we've got water, and now we've got sewer, and it's it's, it's all it's all adding up. <laughs> and, that, and that's why we couldn't support a general override, right? Right. Yeah, because that just right. would fly at this point either. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. Maybe through taxation in the future it might be something to look at. It's kind of you know, especially since the we all benefit from as a town from the commercial enterprises that use sewer. But yeah, and I think something too, and, and I'm going to put my hand here just in case David comes at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think this year we need to take a, a much closer look. Again, just get make sure everybody has their head wrapped around the administrative chargebacks to the and the impact on the, the enterprise funds. Again, I have some level of comfort because I've been looking at that for a long time, but I think it's always worth um, a fresh look. You know. Yeah, I'd love to see some information just that's, you know, more of a, you know, I'm so used to looking at balance sheets and stuff like that from a business perspective, and I see the budgets and everything that we have, but it's really hard to get a feel for revenues on those as well as expenses over the past So the good news years. is. It's right here. I didn't get to that part when I was. Um, <laughs> the, 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 um, when the annual report comes out. Yeah. If. If you're used to looking at balance sheets and income mm -hmm. statements, you, this will actually make more sense to you. All right. Um, then because they, be they lay it out just that way. Okay. Yeah. So if we were to look at chargebacks and let's just say we could drastically decrease chargebacks in some way, would that make a increase like this um, not as necessary or not needed? Yes, because there's revenue back in, right. into the enterprise fund. Right, there's a way of looking at it. Right, um, just, I, just the, the huge amount of the chargebacks that you're getting. I feel like that, you know, it's it's revenue that basically your department's raising that's going elsewhere in town. Which well, you is know, tough. We, just so you know, we've looked at a lot of things. Um, we looked at, you know, as, as far as last show and looked at quarterly billing. Is there any way we can do the billing from our office? <clears throat> which could save in chargebacks, you know, the collector's office would collect, we would, okay. So then I ran into the IT issue. We can't do it down there because of the IT issue. So the, that has to be addressed first. So, you know, everything seems to have its steps that uh, are a little behind. But, but we can um, put ourselves on a path. Yes, to make yes. Path. And, you it may know, take a couple of years. Yeah, right? you know, and I, yeah, I think, well, you know, I've talked about that, David, and I've talked about it. So, 
Um, as far as, yeah, I mean, bringing, you know, a lot of the stuff we do in-house now, I mean, our, our operators actually inspectors that go out there, too. I mean, you know, we don't, we don't have an official, you know, we, we have a lot of, we're lacking a lot of positions other DPWs have, but we're very unique that we have skilled people that do that, those things. So, you know, the belts have been tight. I mean, I'm pretty impressed what we can get done in the department with what we have for staffing, both water and sewer. Uh, we have three operators in each division and they're responsible for the infrastructure and the plants. So, um, there's a lot to do. Uh, I wish, I would certainly would love to bring better information to you. And again, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm just bringing you the facts that come out of the study and where we're at with the numbers. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's all I could do. There's a motion on the table. One second. Second. All in favor? Aye. No. I'll vote aye. Three to one. With an absentee. Well, he kept up saying that. Right on. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. All right. That just concludes the regular meeting. I would like to entertain a motion to go into executive session. Oh, sorry. <coughs> but I'll make a motion. <laughs> that, that, I just, are there no more announcements or anything? No more announcements. We're all I set. think we got them all. We got them all. <laughs> all right. Make a motion that uh, select board goes into executive session for the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. Um, if an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the bargaining and the um, position of the public body, and the chair so declares, um, and this is relative to the police union. I don't need to say. You don't need to say. As chair, as chair, I declare uh, we will go into executive session for uh, police union negotiations. Uh, if uh, an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining uh, position of the public body. Is there a second? A second. Roll we'll call vote, Stanley? Aye. Bill? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Kagan? Yes. <laughs> Not to reconvene an open session, also. Who's Stanley? <laughs> 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 Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night at the town meeting, May 7 o'clock, 3rd. Be there early to get a seat. It is also in the gym. <laughs> <laughs>